Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl Lewisim, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to get into some news, rumors, trade rumors. Of course, the whole Montreal Canadian situation. We all want to talk about that, don't we? Yeah. And you can talk about this more at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Five weekdays from 3 to 5 Eastern. You can come. It's all interactive. You can talk about whatever team, whatever thing you want to talk about. Or you can just listen to everybody else talk about it. Mostly me. And uh, it's it's a lot of frolic. I would highly recommend it. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and things going on in the four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Check it out. Okay, we're going to look at some things. I like to look at pro hockey rumors, some great writers there. Um, also, the rumors usually have a lot of validity to them and, and attachments that show validity to some of these rumors that they're possible that they could actually happen, not just pulling it right out of the air somewhere. So we're going to take a look at that. I'm going to give my take on some of the things that they're saying, my reaction as well, and... Uh, We'll go from there. It's Vancouver Canucks, Dallas Stars, Nashville Predators, uh, some New York Rangers stuff, Montreal Canadiens. Lots of frolic, boys and girls. Let's check it out. Okay, the first thing we're going, this is from Brian LaRosse. And, uh, or LaRose. Probably LaRose. LaRose. Good writer. I like his stuff. Always comes up with interesting takes. Uh, apparently, the Hurricanes have inquired about the availability of Stars defense defenseman John Klingberg. Sportsnet, Je Sportsnet's Jeff Merrick reports. Pretty good source. The 21-year-old is in the final year of his contract, and a report earlier in the season suggested that he is seeking a max term eight-year extension over $60 million. So uh, doing the math there, that's seven point something million dollars a year. Well, if we look at it, that makes some sense here. Uh, if you look at some of the defensemen, Miro Hiskanen, he's not asking for as much as Miro, who is their superstar of the future. Uh, he's asking for a little more than Essel and Dow, which... He kind of fair. He's an offensive guy. He's been there, a been there a quite a long time. So he's looking for something in between that. Now, of course, the issue, as it is with most teams here, is the Dallas Stars do have some cap issues. However, those issues are not really dire. You, you don't have to sign Raffle next year. Radulov has not had a good year. He's 35 probably be able to sign them for half of what they did at 6.25 million somewhere around there depending he may say no i want blah 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 and then really they could let him go and try to fill it in a different way um joe pavelski is still solid but at 37 i don't think 7 million is what's going to be he's going to be getting it's probably going to be a one-year contract, four to five million. So you're shaving a little bit off of there. Honestly, I think they have the ability here. They don't need to sign Bra Braden Holtby back to be able to sign uh, Klingberg. Now, they do have some guys coming up in the minors uh, that are going to be ready eventually. I'm not sure that I would say that they're going to be ready right away to take that spot. And the other issue with Dallas is if they, in fact, do not sign John Klingberg or trade him, which would almost certainly be for uh, younger players, it's kind of a sign that they're moving on from trying to win right now. Thomas Harley is a guy that looks like he's going to play. Uh, Besides that, they're not steeped in prospects to take over that defensive position, especially on the right side right away. 
My inkling here is he's going to get his money and they're going to sign him. I think the most interesting part about this actually really is the fact that Carolina is mentioned in the deal. Uh, Carolina is mentioned by Merrick to be interested. Now, when you take into this consideration, guys like Merrick or, you know, any of these big guys that break rumors or information or news have to really get the okay from the team to do this. Carolina would have had to have said, yeah, go ahead and tell them we did that. Because if they don't, they're just going to lose trust. There's, there's information you're just not going to get. There, you don't want to be going to the guys like Merrick and stuff like that, or even uh, Elliot Friedman. Elliot Friedman, when that stuff goes through him, it's been okayed by the team for him to say it. Because if not, he would nobody would ever tell him anything. See, and same as Merrick as well. That's not where you're going to break the biggest rumors. But the fact that Carolina would okay this. And we just got information that uh, Anthony D'Angelo and Ethan Bear go are on COVID protocol. I, I doubt. I doubt very much that that had anything to do with this. Okay, but I do find it interesting that they're both right-handed defensemen. They're both restricted free agents at the end of this year. And now they're saying it's okay for them to talk about Klingberg. Makes you wonder if maybe they're going to, they're all in on those two guys, Bear and D'Angelo there. These are the messages I like to see in these rumors that are going on. This is a message to D'Angelo and Bear. When you come back, we want to see more. And D'Angelo has put up 19 points in 20 games. Now, it's also quite possible that they realize that D'Angelo and Bear are not really what you would call your top pairing defensemen. You could play somebody like Klingberg with Slavin, uh, D'Angelo with Shea, and Bear with Cole, and you still got a pretty good lineup. It could be just the fact that they are making it clear out there that they would like to upgrade in that right D number one spot. And they're making it clear to Klingberg that if you are thinking about going somewhere, you probably want to call us first. So my, my inkling though is that Dallas, Dallas is just not a team that rebuilds until the bitter end. And he's only 29 years old. He wants eight years uh, look at look at the guys that they have in here. They have no problems having old players. Like Dallas has never had a problem having old players. So my inkling is that they will re-sign them. Now the eight years they may have got to the point where in Dallas where they thought, okay, we got to stop this. We're not given eight years. So in which case they may want to trade them at the deadline, I suppose, or just let them go and use that cap space for another defenseman, I think it's more likely that that would happen. They're in a playoff fight right now. This is an ownership that wants to win now. Not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, now. So my inkling is they'll let him go and they'll sign another free agent up if they have to. But I doubt very much that they, he's traded in season. All right. We'll find out if I'm accurate on that or not. Next one, Forsberg. They have a decision to make pending UFA winger Philip Forsberg. Uh, the Nashville Predators do, that is. Um, they really are a team right now that doesn't have any cup chances. So we're, you're, uh, a general manager is looking at this team. I think, honestly, you have to look at this team and realize you're not a cup contender. Considering the core probably isn't good enough to contend moving forward, that. I mean, it's pretty obvious they are a good, hardworking team, but are they going to win a cup? Do they have the shooters? No. Is, and, and with Forsberg there signing them up, is that are they going to be here five years from now? 
And as it, it's mentioned here, Arvidsson and Ryan Ellis were already jettisoned off for some young players. It certainly appears that a youth movement is happening here in Nashville. Now, let's look at Nashville here. Uh, they, you're, you're talking about a guy who's 27 years old. Philip Forsberg, yes. Making $6 million. It's going to be a UFA next year. Probably going to be looking somewhere around $9, nine million, something like that, in the future. So the question is, at 27, do you think you're going to be relevant in five years? Because maybe you do sign him up. He's going to want the max, almost assuredly. It's going to be till he's 35 years old. If you Now that you're getting good years from Matt Duchesne and Johansson, maybe you can pony those ones off. But I think the logical conclusion here is to totally rebuild this team including Forsberg, get as many assets as you can start all over because it just hasn't worked. That's what I think. I don't know what they think. Uh, I don't know what Poyle thinks. This is going to be so interesting to see if they pony Forsberg up because if they do, you're looking at a team that has got to be looking for more. they got to be looking for more in this lineup to have a chance. Roman Josie can't do it all by him. Josie can't do it all himself. Matthias Ekholm's not getting any younger. They did sign him up long term, though. So it's 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 a team that's right in the middle of everything. Now, if Philip Forsberg is available at six million, are there going to be teams looking uh, uh, wanting to take a look at him? Absolutely. And uh, the first one I'm looking at here is the Anaheim Ducks. Got to remember cap space. He's making six million. There's a lot of teams higher up that are more contenders, like uh, the Boston Bruins, which we will get to in a second. That would like be interested as well. But we're we're assuming. I'm assuming that if they're trading Forsberg, they're not looking to get money back if they don't have to. They're looking to go him to find a team for him, and he doesn't have a no trade clause, by the way that is willing to take them now and maybe they work out a deal that if they can sign them, they'll get more draft picks and stuff like that. I think that's where they would likely go. And I'm going to start with the Anaheim Ducks, who's having a resurgent season this year. They're uh, basically uh, trending towards possibly winning a playoff spot in the Pacific on a team that needs that money Coming in, they they're not a traditional market, of course. It's Sun Belt team, not a team that wants to be rebuilding. Uh, uh, it wants to increase their rebuild as fast as possible. Forsberg is 27 years old, and that is an age that I think they could swallow that for until he's 35 years old. When you look at the trajectory, it appears that they're on. You got Trevor Zegras making a young budding superstar possibly, certainly looks like a star, 14 points in 20 games all right. Ready? Troy Terry is rounding out to what they always thought he would be now, scoring uh, at a over a point-a-game clip. Uh, Isaac Lunderstrom looks like he's going to be a really good third-line center. They have a lot of young players that they're right on the cusp of possibly being a contender. And a guy like Forsberg could really bring this along. So what are they going to give in return is the question. First of all, they do have cap space. Uh, in fact, they're on the in the bottom of the league in uh, amount of cap that they have. Next, they have 15 million in cap space now, 40 million next year. Now, they do have to sign guys like Manson and Lindholm, uh, Rickard Raquel if they want to. Uh, Ryan Getzloff is on one year from now on, but they can make those, they can change that up if they want to. If you have somebody like Forsberg, do you need a Rickard Raquel? You see? They get options, and and Forsberg has put up some huge numbers 
in his tenure as in the league. And still looks like he has a lot of legs left in him. Let's look at his numbers here. So far, this year he's had injury issues. That's going to be a little bit of an issue for sure. But he's consistently had 30 goal seasons the last couple of years. He's been a little bit on the low side uh, because Nashville really hasn't been that good. Also, um, at 27 years old, on a stronger team with better centers, Forsberg could probably put a lot better numbers up than he has. I think Anaheim would have some interest here. They'd be looking at guys like Sam Steele. Uh, maybe maybe the aforementioned Ricker Raquel, who's been struggling in Anaheim in his time there the last little while, could be thrown in to uh, give... Nashville, a guy to play on the wing until new young players come in. Their first round draft pick next year, which is what I'm sure Nashville would be looking for. And that might be able to do it. And then possibly extra picks based on whether they resign him or not. But I think Anaheim would be very interested in a, in a deal such as this. Um, just simply from a step, it would it quicken the rebuild, make this team more competitive right away. This isn't the deepest draft in the world. Anaheim is about middle of the pack. Nashville would probably be happy with that mid pick and the cap space and everything that comes with it. I don't know if there's too many teams who would be able to compete with an offer like this, but I know the Boston Bruins would certainly be in there like a dirty shirt looking for somebody like him. Uh, the problem is, is he's a left winger. And you already have Taylor Hall and Marshawn. So that would make it difficult. But for the scoring depth, I'm sure they would offer up their first-round pick. Somebody like Jacob Zaborl, Oscar Steen has been doing well in the minors, guys like that. I just don't think they're going to compete with Anaheim to be able to uh, bring home that. Now, the other one would be the New York Islanders. New York Islanders are in a situation where – They've played a lot of hockey the last couple of years. And I think this team is just simply tired. Yeah, there was a short window of rest this for this year. Then they have this long road trip, an 18 game road trip, and this team is gassed. However, I doubt very much they're looking to rebuild. They're looking to add, I'm sure of it, because that's just the way they've trended all the way through here. Now, if they were to do something like this, they, it would definitely have to give money back. And that money, I believe, would be on a guy like Bailey, Josh Bailey, who they offered up to Seattle for expansion. That would make the money work a lot better. Um, now, they're going to have to re-sign Forsberg after the year, and I'm sure they would have to work out some space to be able to do that. And there would be something in the deal that would involve uh, picks, extra picks if they resign them. More than likely, that's usually how it works out. Who else would they be offering up? Now, if I'm Nashville, there's not they, they don't have a lot of depth. I'm sure they'll be offering up Bellows, but for sure I'm looking at their first round pick. You're giving up their first round pick. At this point, their trajectory doesn't look good for what that first pick is going to be. And if I'm Nashville, I'm hoping that Forsberg doesn't change that for them and you end up getting a high pick in the long run. Bit of a gamble, but I think it's a good gamble here. And as far as the Islanders are concerned, I think they believe, I would imagine they believe that after the, um, the uh, Olympic break, they'll have more rest and they can give her a good run. And a guy like Forsberg to play with Barzal, who really desperately needs a team, a player that can uh, be creative with them, I believe. I believe that's the biggest problem for the Islanders is that they don't have somebody like that. Would be a good move. And Forsberg's only 27 years old. For the Islanders, that's a young player. So tell, tell me, if, what Islanders fans, what you think of that. Uh, if you think that is a possibility for the Islanders, if you like that idea or not like that idea, and we'll go to the next thing here. This, oh my gosh. 
Canucks receiving strong, strong trade interest for Bo Horvat. I'll tell you what, right? I'll tell. So I believe right now that if they lose Bo Horvat because of all the nonsense that Benning has done with this team, having let's take a look at this team, okay? Bo Horvat is first of all pretty much their captain. Uh has he has he been named captain to this team? I should look at that. Yes, he's he is a captain. I thought he was named. He's a captain. He's 26 years old. You you're telling me out of all the players you want to trade to change things around here, Bo Horvat is the guy you're looking at, not JT Miller who's 2 years older, has a contract coming up next the year after this or anybody really. This is their heart and soul. Fire Benning right, right now. You brought in guys like Oliver Ekman Larson, who are, what, four points in 22 games, making $8 million a year. Tyler Myers, a couple years ago, you signed for $6 million a year. And I don't know, they obviously don't look at analytics at all because he's been horrible defensively for a long time. Hasn't changed. Uh, Quinn Hughes, great. Great draft, some some very good drafting, and Tucker Pullman at two and a half million a year for I don't know what the heck that's all about. Why? 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 It's a complete waste of cap space, and then you're going to lose Bull Harvat out of the deal. I'm hoping if you're a Vancouver's fan that what Benning is doing here is what a lot of general managers do, and he is taking the best player he has, sort of, Pedersen's supposed to be, but right now Bo Horvat is, and seeing what is out there. Because teams will give you, like, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. And then at the end of the day, say, that's not enough for Bo Horvat, but maybe JT Miller, now that I know what you're willing to trade, how about we look at JT Miller? It sounds like he's more in your range of where, we want to go here, or where you can afford. You see, I think that's most likely what's happening here. God, I hope so, because if not, uh, it's just no way I trade a guy like Bohova unless I'm getting serious return back. If he is available, though, the New York Rangers will be like clamoring all over the phone. Uh, probably give up Ryan Strom. Philip Heidel and one of their solid young defensemen like Zachary Jones, Matthew Robertson. Ah, it would give it would give Vancouver depth up the middle and 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 a solid young defenseman. But I hate the giving up Horvat. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Um, we are. I did a video a little while ago. If it happened to be J T. Miller, but. I think the New York Rangers would be the most bullish in this situation. But within their division, maybe the Calgary Flames would also be there. I mean, you could just go down the list here. Buffalo, Anaheim, Detroit, Nashville, Ottawa, Columbus. Like every team would be on the phone. So, yes, the package, you could probably get a really good package for Bull Horvat. But in the end, still not win the trade. So I think it's a terrible idea. I sure as heck hope, hope it's not happening. Um, I'm sure the Rangers fans out there that are listening will love to hear more from you. I'll send that out to you. See what you think about Bo Horvat going to New York or, yeah, like I said, anybody. I should do a video just based trading Bo Horvat to every team in the NHL. And what you would get, because I think just about every team in the NHL would be on the phone trying to give, trying to get Bo Horvat. That would be just, but it would be a terrible move. Finally, we'll talk about the big thing, and I'll do it real quick here. There's going to be a lot of talk about the move of firing Bergevin. And uh, bringing in Jeff Gordon as executive vice president of hockey operations. Well, first of all, Jeff Gordon is the general manager. 
The next question will be which French Canadian out there will be the poster boy as a manager for the team. And that's the difficult thing. So if you're thinking of Patrick Waugh, probably not. There's a fellow from Tampa Bay, and I wanted to mention, I, I, I completely forgot his name. I heard it several times. I heard it several times on uh, Sirius Radio, but his name is escaping me now. Anyways, whoever it is, I wouldn't want this job. That's really what I wanted to talk about here. Bergevin getting fired and Timmons going. They have a terrible drafting record, so it makes a lot of sense. Jeff Gordon did fantastic things for the New York Rangers as far as their drafting is concerned. They have a kid named Schneider coming up that he drafted on defense that they drafted up to get. Looks, wait to see what this kid's all about. They've done, he did a fantastic job in New York. And I think that's really what's happening here for Montreal. Um, they're going to be a lot of movement. They brought in, Bergevin brought in a bunch of players to try to do a one last gasp run for the cup, which almost worked. And after that, I think it just seems with the energy of the team, the energy of everything, they're all gone. Let's bring up the Montreal Canadiens here. They're all gone. I, with Gorton there, this is the rebuild master. It's why the Rangers had him. They let him go because of some issues that happened in the room or whatever, but obviously it wasn't that bad because uh, he's got another job. The league did, the people around the league thought it was fine. But Jonathan Duran, you can pretty much like keep Suzuki Caulfield. Duran, Toffoli, even Dvorak, Josh Anderson. And you say, I doubt Brendan Gallagher. But those guys that I just mentioned, and Oturi Lekkinen, maybe Jake Evans, I see them all likely being gone. And under Bergevin, that would have been very difficult to do because the optics of the rest of the league, if you're trying to get free agents, and you use players as pawns or as if they're not even people by signing them to contracts and then a year later trading them away, it makes it very difficult to get free agents later on. And for Montreal and the tax situation they have, that's not very good optically. This isn't great either, but at least they can say, we were trying to go a different direction. We decided to go a different direction. We gave it a shot. Didn't work. Gordon came in. He has a new vision. Sorry, guys. Got to let you go. It's going to soften the blow a lot more than it would if they didn't do that. That's my full 42. It's all I have to give to you today. All the news and notes and rumors brought to you by the Pearl of Wisdom Show. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. I gotta go have a nap. Okay, bye.